we'll give it a couple of minutes to let people get in and then we'll get started. It's always a bit weird at the beginning, isn't it? But it's still tilted. <laughs> Okay, folks, I think we'll we'll um, kick off and hopefully we've got most people in the room. Welcome. Uh, this is our second Oxford Brooks webinar in the series, The Three R's in 2020 to 21, uh, Reflect, Recover, Refresh, Reimagining Learning and Teaching in a Changing World. Um, I'm Dr. Rachel Payne. I'm a Principal Lecturer in Student Experience at Oxford Brooks. I'm the Subject Leader for the Artist Teacher Practice MA, and I'm Immediate Past President of NSEAD, which stands for the National Society for Education in Art and Design, uh, and I'm chairing this webinar. Um, this series has been developed by colleagues working on uh, MA in Education programmes in the School of Education and it um, builds on the first webinar which happened back in October 2020 which was a conversation between senior lecturer John Reed and Professor Barry Carpenter discussing the recovery curriculum. Um, today we'll examine the role of art, craft and design and what role it can play in, in um, combating children and young people's stress and anxiety during the uncertain times that we've experienced over the last 12 months. We're going to argue that young people are better equipped to address mental health issues and deal with adversity as a result of studying art, craft and design. To examine this, we're going to invite you to experience a conversation that was recorded about a month ago between Master Potter and judge of the great pottery throwdown, Keith Brimer Jones, and BTEC art and design students from Bexhill College. Um, we're going to show you four different excerpts of the recording today that we've organised, and we're going to organise a, a panel discussion based around each of them. I'm really, really delighted to welcome Keith um, here today, who is also a patron of NSEAD. Um, and he's sitting on our panel of experts, which also includes Michelle Gregson, who is General Secretary for NSEAD. Michelle has spent many years developing education programs that focus on the power of young artists to be leaders of pro-social change. We also have Jed Gast, um, who's an educational consultant in visual arts, creativity and learning. Jed is a former president of NSEAD and he's currently their trade union advisor. He's been a teacher, a school improvement consultant, an Ofsted inspector, he's contributed to initial teacher education and he continues to work on creativity, thinking skills, equalities, health and safety and produces guidance on these specialist areas of art and design. And our final panellist is Kevin Matheson, who's a former art advisor, now artist in residence at Manorfield Primary School in Tower Hamlets. Both Keith and uh, uh, but, uh, both Jed and Kevin have uh, devised the Life After Lockdown project that we're going to be talking about today. And finally, I'd like to extend a really warm welcome to the students uh, at Bexhill College and their teacher, Julie Clark, who are sitting in the audience today. And we welcome comments from you. And uh, if any of you would like to, you know, have something that you'd like to contribute, just pop it in the chat and we can um, mic you up and, and you would be very welcome to contribute to the discussion. Um, at key points throughout the event, we'll post relevant links in the chat and also we're going to provide quite an extensive resource pack for participants after the event. We invite you to ask questions or make comments through the chat and we'll incorporate these into panel discussions where we can, time dependent. Where we can't, we will, um, I, I, I will respond to them, we'll be able to respond to them afterwards. Um, I'd also like to really thank everybody who has already submitted questions uh, and again we're going to address as many of those as we possibly can. Um, uh, 
please use the following hashtags if you're posting about the event on social media. So um, hashtag 3Rs 2021 and hashtag life after lockdown. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go straight into the first video, uh, which is an introduction to the Bexhill students. Hello folks, hi, hi. So, I mean, you know, who knew you'd start uh, doing uh, an art course and all of a sudden we'd all go into lockdown. <laughs> and uh, obviously it's been um, a very strange year to say the least. Um, and uh, it's kind of ironic, ironic that you, you're, 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 doing you're doing something, something that's, uh, that's uh, a creative, creative and a communicative, communicative kind of, kind of uh, 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 sort of endeavour, and, and yet you can't, you can't really, really go and see go anyone. See anyone. Um, so, um, so you've all been you've sort all been of locked, been locked away in your own your kind own of bubbles. bubbles. And, um, and um, you know, yeah, I, I, I am genuinely interested in how you've coped with with kind of being on your own, getting feedback through this piece, this screen. Screen, which, I which I can't stand, stand actually. actually. Uh, I'm, no, really, I'm old really old school. Give me a lump of clay and a bench, and, bench and, I'm, and I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, but, uh, but, but we've but all had to sort of succumb, to, succumb to, this to this kind of way of, way of communicating, communicating which, 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 as we've probably just seen, is a is a bit on the flat side, and it's not it's not that human interaction that you get, and it's not that human interaction that you get with something that you've created as well, which is which is really difficult. So. So I'll tell you what, what I'll do is I'll go round the screen and I'll, I'll come to each and every one of you because otherwise it'll just be a, a big sort of mess. Uh, how are you? Are you all right? Yeah, it's a bit weird, but it's great. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Mm, not great, really. Just been very stressful and hard. Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. A bit of a blessing and a bit of a curse. Practically a mix of both. I'm, I do, I do really, um, I, I don't think it's too fine a point to say that, that I, you know, there have been days where I have really struggled to get motivated. Um, and, uh, you know, when that happens for me, I often think uh, of, of three or four tasks that I know are achievable um, and make sure that I achieve those in the day. Now, they could be anything from cleaning my shoes <laughs> or or actually making something specific to be able to work on later on in the week and, and just to start that process. And I found that that's really, really helped me that, that just, just set yourself achievable goals every single day. Um, and then, and then, you know, try and achieve them and you can at least go to bed at night feeling kind of positive about what you've done. And it can be, it, it could, could also be, you know, incorporated into doing a project like you lot have done i mean it's it's fantastic and i've been reading you so just tell me a little bit about your project uh it helped me cope um as uh during my experience it again gave me a chance to escape from the world that i was stuck in but at the same time it gave me a i don't know a way to connect with my like local community at the same time it, it's i don't know it was a very weird ex weird experience and i i'm guess i take i guess i take it for granted a lot more than i would have expected i my art mostly helped me cope through lockdown because it it made me realize that if people are dealing with racism and the feeling of isolation all of the time whenever they're um being discriminated against um, it made me realise that actually I can get through this and um, the whole the whole nation, the whole world are going through it together. Um, so I'm not in it alone. Everyone's going through it, unfortunately. Yeah, art helped me cope on lockdown because I could communicate and express my feelings uh, without social pressure, as well as manipulate the paint and listen to music helped me uh, with my mental health, sort of like a calming process of just painting. 
Um, I think it did help to have art there. I'm not sure it was like, obviously, it didn't solve all my problems, but if I was feeling down or if I was struggling with college work, um, just a few little sketches to pass the time would usually put my focus back in and make me a little bit more motivated, I guess. It helped me to look at other stuff other than just what's going on in lockdown, the, like other than people being ill and in hospital it helped me fi figure out instead of just waiting for time to go past and just waiting for life to pick up I had something to do during lockdown. Yeah it's definitely helped me because it, well, it provides me with something to do that I really enjoy which is quite a big thing when it's going through a period of time like this which is quite mm -hmm. difficult. And... Yeah it did help me because it helped me to like get into a routine instead of just staying in bed and becoming unmotivated. Art helped me to cope in lockdown because I could express whatever I wanted whenever I wanted and I felt no pressure. Art was a way for me to escape the negativity and focus on more positive things. Sorry, I've just realised I'm on mute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the joys. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll start again. <laughs> um, uh, uh, what, what, we're, what we're going to do today, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to go to each member of the, of the panel. I think we've just briefly lost Michelle. Oh, no, she's back. That's great. Um, uh, and I'm going to ask each person to just give us a little bit of information that will help us flesh out the topic that we're exploring today um, and I'm going to start off by asking Keith to tell us a little bit about why he's so passionate about art craft and design education. Great hello How, hi everyone uh, thanks for joining us it's, br it's brilliant to um, well see you kind of um, on this thing and yeah, lo and behold, mute, unmute. It's, I mean, what a nightmare. Uh, it really is. And and uh, that's that's kind of one of the one of the sort of two dimensional problems about you know this kind of interaction. You know, and and that really kind of falls into the question that Rachel's just asked me. It, it is it is vitally important that that we have creative subjects within our our education system, uh, and and right from the from the the very bottom to the the, the top of the spectrum from universities to primary schools because um, uh, as you've just heard uh, those students they are articulating their ideas their thoughts through a cognitive process and that is so so important um, not just in terms of of of, of being uh, as I say articulate but but in terms of setting out a process of of, of creating something and planning it through and 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 this is why it's so vital um, for, for, for all forms of of your of your life when you when you when you leave school when you leave university or even if you don't even go into creative subjects that that sense of process is so so important in in every walk every walk of life yeah that's why I'm passionate about it but I'll try not to cry today I will try not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Keith. I don't know. I think people might be a bit disappointed if you did, but no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's that was that was great. Thank you very much um, for for presenting your position. Let, let's now go over to Kevin, who's going to give us a little introduction to the Life After Lockdown project that the students engaged with. Hi, everybody. I think when the lockdown uh, first started, I think one of the things that shocked me was that. We had all these students in school whose examinations were cancelled. So they'd been working hard, going towards their examinations. And whilst there was some art beginning to appear and it was coming on the, the evening news, I suddenly thought, what about all of these people who, these young, young people who 
you know, need a voice really. They need a, they need a way to express themselves into what's going on with this global pandemic. So I think it was quite late at night that I rang Jed, who's on this panel, and I just said, hey, I've got an idea, what do you think? And he said, yeah, that sounds like a goal. And, and um, he jotted some of the things that I was jabbering about. And, and lo and behold, we, we, we had a project idea, which we, along with a few of the colleagues, developed. Um, and so we launched in um, probably late April um, and put it out through the, the NSEAD and on the Life After Lockdown Project website. Um, which is still there today, it's still live, it's still open, waiting for more submissions from young people. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit now because Julie, who's, who's students who, who just who just said hello to you, is unwell and not able to be with us this evening. So I'm just going to read out something that she's sent to us. Excuse me if I look to my other screen. So this is what she says. Um, when we went into lockdown in March 2020, the first year extended diploma students at Bexhill College were working on a ceramics project, Keith, <laughs> um, which, was, they could, which they couldn't continue. Um, she decided that, to, that, you know, that it would benefit from having a project that would help focus uh, and record their experience of what was happening to them as they were in lockdown at home and, and something that tried to make sense of, sense of what was going on. Um, and she says, what other subject could provide the opportunity to give meaning to such a situation? Um, you know, the students created personal journals influenced by artists, made, you know, collected information in diaries, recording their experiences of the lockdown um, on social media as well, which informed the development of their final pieces. And then the teaching was remote until September when they came back into college for a sort of mix of sort of online and face-to-face um, -face learning. Um, she came across the Life After Lockdown project through a friend, Jane Sedgwick, um, who connected her to the project and she saw this as a way of actually helping to focus those students by submitting their work and having it then just you know put onto the website so other people could see and share their experiences and um you know and um you know this is says ironically that they were what they were watching the great pottery throwdown before all this happened as well keith of course they were um, of course <laughs> and um you know but so She's really pleased with her outcomes, and um, you know, she said it's been a great project to work on. It's helped to focus those students and give them some kind of purpose and um, way of trying to cope with what's going on with the dialogue that she's had with them, even 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 in a remote way. And she's she's also felt that it's been that you know she says that you know that she you know she sees art and design education as 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 being able to support their mental health and well-being um you know and and the same for lots of other students as well okay so sorry Judy, that you can't be here this evening and but we wish you well okay. that's lovely kevin thank you and and yes absolutely to reiterate that we wish you a speedy recovery julie um okay let's move on to jed who uh i uh, we thought at this point that it was really important for us to make a clear distinction between art, craft and design education and art therapy. Art therapy is a very specific thing and uh, it, and that's not what we're talking about. So I'm going to hand over to Jed, who's going to just talk a little bit about the differences between the two. Yeah, thank you, Rachel. Um, we've mentioned mental health and well-being several times and you'll hear that coming up in the conversations between Keith and the students when we see the other pieces of video. Um, mental health and well-being suggests that um, students are quite possibly going to have some difficulties, some problems. And I think we're all familiar, not just with students having this, but with adults uh, finding it very difficult remaining in, in one room or in a house uh, all the time and completing all their work and studying online. Um, we've put together to guidance documents with lots of links for you to try and help take you through some of these issues and to give you access to lots of websites, reports, guidelines, documents that have been produced. Um, the whole issue of mental health and well-being is being rehearsed right across the world at the moment. Um, but in the context of what we do in our schools, I wanted to draw a distinction between um, mental health and well-being focus, the use of the arts and engagement with the arts to promote 
creative thinking, creative working, um, making activities um, to engage young people and to get them uh, participating in, in the visual arts. But to set that aside from um, what we might think of and is sometimes referred to in the media as art therapy. Now, if you look on the internet, you'll find a lot of guidance talking about art therapy and art therapy in schools and art therapy in colleges. Now, you know, art, art therapy is a very specific um, set of activities. It, it, it's completely concerned with um, a form of psychotherapy. And therefore, we shouldn't really think about art therapy in the context of what schools will offer. Schools might offer therapeutic art lessons, but these are not art therapy. And so we've put lots of links into the first guidance document that you should have access to um, today that give you an understanding of, of how that can be tackled. I wanted to sort of call out to a few organisations just before finishing, um, just to say that the British Association of Art Therapists are running courses for teachers in um, in developing therapeutic lessons. And I put the links to that in the guidance that we provided. I put links to Ofsted and HMI documents that I think you'll find helpful in getting an understanding of, of these issues. Um, links to the Cultural Learning Alliance uh, guidance documents, the Art Rich School guidance document from the RSA, but also uh, a number of government documents and Bera as well as the Scottish Curriculum Authority, who produced some very good, very good guidance in these areas. Okay. Thank you, Jed. That's great. Um, and uh, finally, before we go to uh, our first question, um, I'm going to hand over to Michelle, who is going to talk to us about some of the implications for making space for young people's voices through art practice. Thanks, Rachel. Hopefully I won't be flung out unceremoniously again, as I did a moment ago, just dropped off the call. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say um, something about the power of the subject um, as a means of voice in the context of what Jed's just, just been saying, really, because making artwork gives us a really unique space where we can explore personal interests, our thoughts, feelings, experiences, and then present back what we've discovered to other people um, in this amazing visual form. Now, I think it's absolutely critical that should be part of education at any time, but particularly now at a point where we're really thinking about rupture and repair. Um, there's um, certainly um, plenty of research out there about, about about voice in art. But, you know, art gives humans voice and it means to broadcast it. And I think that's particularly tr true for children, young people who do struggle to be heard frequently, particularly in the UK. Good educators have always thought about and made space for student voice in all its formats. And what we're saying really this evening is that that should absolutely include the nonverbal means of expression. Uh, I want to really point out um, some of the recent discussion in the group around what's been going on during the pandemic in terms of impact on learning and well-being and some of the recommendations that are starting to come through. Kevin Collins, the recovery programme commissioner, is seeking views far and wide and certainly NSEAD are contributing to that conversation. But there was one that really caught my eye from Edu Impact, who've been looking at the impact on, on pupils throughout the pandemic and produced their final report a few weeks ago. And I think that's in, in the documentation. They pointed out all the things that we might have expected to see um, happening to, to children, young people. Um, so lots of things confirmed, but some really interesting recommendations about the kind of strategies that should be used as we move forward, and particularly about strategies to uh, find out how young people are feeling and what they need. And they're very particular in saying that those strategies should be ways of gathering information directly from children and people themselves. And obviously art and design, art craft and design, lend themselves to that very well. 
when we're thinking then about interventions in schools and colleges that are going to support children and young people to communicate what these experiences were we need to remember that we've got a responsibility to listen to what we hear we will understand students better i think if we give them voice and if we give them voice through art and design but we might not uh, be completely comfortable with what we hear uh, and we should be prepared to hear things that maybe we don't anticipate there are real implications here actually for safeguarding um, and some of the things that are produced by students may well um, effectively be moments of disclosure does that mean that we avoid it and that we just um, get them to focus on uh, making making nice things uh, absolutely not this is a real opportunity to do something to support them and to hear them it's potentially very difficult but we can't avoid it so but very much in the context of what Jed's just been saying about art therapy I think it's something to bear in mind thank you Michelle um, I, I think what we tried to achieve through today's um, through today's webinar is to give voice to students and to demonstrate how it can be done in a respectful uh, in a respectful way. Um, I was going to go to questions, but I'm I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to move straight into uh, our our next section, where I'm going to introduce you to um, uh, the three R's. So. The uh, Jed and Kevin um, edited the recording between Keith and the students to reflect these three R's and these are reflect, recover and refresh. And we've organised the next three R, uh, three videos, the next three videos in relation to these three R's. The first one that we're going to focus on is reflect. And here we drew very specifically on the conversation that uh, John Reed and uh, Professor Barry Carpenter had in the first webinar about types of loss that children and young people experienced as a result of the pandemic. And, and, and just, to, just to read those out, um, the, these include routine, a loss of routine, a loss of structure, of friendship, of opportunity and of freedom and that the implications of these losses for young people and, and children include bereavement and mourning, attachment, anxiety, trauma and stress. And so what we're, what we're going to do in the next video, the, the video clip that we're now going to show, which which really kind of examines this idea of, of, of reflect, reflecting on loss is um, we, we are going to look at um, how the Bexhill students voice their experiences of loss during lockdown with Keith and then we'll pick up on some, some themes that we can unpack uh, afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to roll the next video. How, so how are you finding lockdown? Uh, lockdown, I think, for everyone has been very stressful and very difficult to deal with. Uh, with my own experience, it's just waking up, waking up every single morning and getting up to the computer, which I just, it's just in my room. It just felt very difficult. It's like the, <laughs> it, it's just the same thing over and over again. It gets repetitive. It but, is a um, big Groundhog Day, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Being able to um, go out though and use photography and use it in my art is kind of an, um, a way for me to go out and explore. Uh, so taking that point then, you because you, I must admit, <laughs> I find it I find it very hard some days to get motivated. You know, yeah. because um, you know you get up and and it, it, the tedium of 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 just going into the same studio and 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 because you're not having all those kind of outside influences, um, you, you, you know you're you're finding it hard to, to sort of get your creative mm -hmm. juices flowing really. And and it's it, it it does take a lot more discipline. I'm finding. Um, I mean, fortunately for me, I, I I am very disciplined to the point of being OCD in my in the way I work. Um, but but so so if you're cooped up in your room and and you're you're wanting to use your photography, do, do you find uh, that you find a different way of of observing observing the world when you do go out with the camera? Do you know yeah, it's more? it's more like an exploration thing where like I want to go and do something with my family, I want to go and do take a photo of this specific like landmark or this specific place because yeah. I think it would look nice on my work. Like yeah, it's yeah. different but, uh, than being cooped up using images and 
just editing them. The, the other thing I, I'm finding with with lockdown, um, and obviously you have deadlines and things um, to a certain or a greater or lesser degree, depending on what you what project it is. But but I'm finding with lockdown, and I don't know about you lot, but um, time is becoming irrelevant mm. <laughs> because you know you you can you can. I mean, just the other day I was I was fixing a kiln. Funnily enough. I was fixing the corner of the kilns downstairs. Now, usually I get very anxious about fixing the kiln because um, I usually rush through the process because I'm, I'm, I've got deadlines, I've got people to meet, I've got places to go, this, that, and the other. And I, was, and, and I kind of woke up in the morning and I just thought, well, actually, it doesn't matter if it takes me all day because I ain't going nowhere. And, um, and, and, and I, it, was that, it was that allowing myself the time and the space um, to do a certain task actually felt quite liberating and and it and for me it i realized that 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 when i was doing tasks or projects or creative projects in the in the past maybe i was rushing them because of because of the outside forces but whereas now in lockdown i mean really i mean i could do this anyway but you can work till two or three in the morning and then get up at 12 the next day who cares you know because we, we don't really have anywhere to be and, and it was that that expanse of time to be able to concentrate on one particular thing I found really hard. Are you are you finding that you're spending sort of longer um, longer over doing certain tasks, or, or 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 maybe you're just spending longer thinking about what you're going to do? Um, it's definitely taking more time um, to do everything, and longer thinking it through and thinking of of your ideas because it's. When, when I'm at college, it's more that you get ideas from the people around you as well as, and while you're at home, it's more difficult, I would say. And so, okay, so we have the yin and yang of lockdown. So yeah. what, 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 what's a blessing about it then? What, what are you finding that's a bit uh, a blessing? I think the blessing is mostly to do with I'm at home with my family and sort of working around my college work whilst at home. But the curse side of it is the structure of things and how they used to run in the first place. Sure. Before all the lockdown happened in that position. You're doing a creative course. You're doing art. You're doing this, this, this cognitive thing, personally cognitive uh, uh, thing uh, with yourself. Um, but have you, have you, do you think this course could always be online? Do you need you need that interaction with other other fellow fellow peers and and that human interaction with your tutors? Yeah or no? Sorry, that was a leading question. I'm leaving it out there. So, Katie, what do you think? So, there's no way that this can carry on online because there's such oh. a there's such different skills skill sets throughout the class. So you've got like six different skills that people are better at and um, some people aren't. So being isolated and not being able to express that skill to the full potential if you had all of this equipment and all of the space, um, it's very challenging. Like well, I know when the first lockdown happened, I had such a creative stump. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I have no creativity. I am stuck, completely stuck. And then like we went back and I was like, well, why was I stuck? Because it's hard it's really really hard doing it on online and then not being able to express it to the full potential that it is i was just trying to get your view on on how you fit how you found the, the course and and the the, the 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 lack of human interaction with a course that's creative like this do you do you feel that, that it, you know it's very very beneficial that you you need to go and see your tutors and see your 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 peers or, or, or could you happily just stay in your room and, and create on your own? Um, <laughs> I think I find that it's very, like, extremely essential uh, for other people to look at your work in person instead of viewing it online because it just loses that sort of meaningful sort of perspective that from viewing it online just doesn't have. Yeah. And generally uh going to college and like being social just helps people's is sort of mental health and like uh sort of overall creating art as a group uh is just really impactful and just good for your mental health
Okay, folks, so the students there talked about a whole range of different losses that they had experienced as a result of um, being in the first lockdown and trying to trying to make art, trying to study the subject um, during the first lockdown. And they talk about things like a loss of structure. Uh, 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 Keith, you talked about the weird experience of time and how things took longer or you engaged with time differently. And, and the students talk about a loss of community, a loss of space to make, uh, uh, not having, you know, no, not having the same quality of uh, um, interaction with their teachers, a loss of communicating the meaning through their practice as well. I mean, they talk about a lot of loss there. Is there any any of you who would like to kind of come in and 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 pick up on what what do we think that this tells us about how loss? Uh, in, in, that these students experienced have an impact on their anxiety and their stress? What do we think? Yeah, Jed. Um, I, I'm, I'm just going to pick up on that issue of anxiety and stress because we heard it from a couple of the students there. Um, and we know that the arts plug us directly into exactly those emotional issues. So um, it, it's bound to be reflected, but but when you engage in in making and being creative, you are processing that information. So as as we heard from one of the students, that it's a bit of a blessing, it's a bit of a curse. So in a way, it, it feeds the information, it feeds the the creativity for some, and for others, it, it you know that kind of anguish, that kind of stress, may have resulted in engaging art or art that took them into new directions but it also is a, a manifestation and a representation of of that of that stress so you know would these students have made exactly this art if they hadn't been in lockdown i think it'd be interesting to hear from them but probably not um so this the lockdown has, has helped them create what they've created but it's brought with it a, a very different experience of the kind of learning process yeah, no, uh, absolutely. Um, and, and also, um, you know, let's not forget, you know, art is is a, a real um, amazing form of communication. And we're talking about the students and their relationship to what they're creating. But let's not forget what they do create then communicates to a wider audience, obviously, the observer. And, mm -hmm. and, and for me, that's that's incredible because there'll be a lot of people that will see certain pieces of art and that will connect with that because they that that particular artist is telling their story as well and and i think that's you know that's not to be underestimated uh you know uh, a picture can tell a thousand words and all that kind of malarkey but but it's absolutely true um and and it and and the reason why it's true is because it's incredibly powerful it's such an incredibly powerful form of communication not with just with oneself but but with the wider audience and and you know I'll, I'll stop in a minute but 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 that's one of the reasons why i get so emotional on the show is because you know i'm, I'm looking at this potter across the table across the judging table and and we've got this piece of work that they've done and it's communicating to me um not just in their technical ability but in the story that they're telling and it, it it's incredibly powerful and you know there is an argument to be had about, about how many words does one need to express the same the same piece of art yeah. millions millions yeah. that you can yeah. that you can do in any kind of form of art um anyway that's that's my two pennies worth <laughs> that's great thank you keith yeah, michelle just um thinking about what what's not been so easy to replicate um in this screen world of teaching and learning is the process um as as things are being developed and created and the failures and the trials and the refinements and when you're working in a studio environment along with your peers you see that you see it happening you see the struggle you see your peers struggling as well and you see them succeeding and i think that's really important um and maybe that's something that has has been a little bit missing for for some some of these students 
Yeah, the, 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 they do talk specifically about the loss of community and the loss of space to make and talk together and, and that kind of how the communication that Keith was talking about becomes slightly disrupted because, they, because they're working in isolation. Um, mm. What do we think in terms of, of the losses that they communicate? Um, what do you think we really need to retain? What aspects are, are you know, some things may be lost and, and that's it, they, they are lost forever. But which of these aspects of loss that they discuss do we really need to make sure we keep hold of in our education systems? Okay. Yep. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm just going to come in with a suggestion that, um, that they also talk about um, the time that they have, um, the time, the space. Um, mm -hmm. I think for many of the students, they looked inwards. And I think it's it's very easy within our classrooms, typically outside of lockdown, to, to engage and be part of a bigger process and a, and a, and a big discourse about, about the work, a big critique. But much of the conversation between between teacher and student has been one to one, and for many of the students, they've looked inwards. Several of the students talked about that notion of an internal dialogue and and a reflection. So maybe the work has become more reflective. Maybe the opportunity to focus in and to, and to think very carefully about one thing. I mean, typically art design can be about anything. You know, it can be about anything in the world. And during lockdown. We've all been thinking about lockdown and we've been thinking about the events that have happened ar around that. So it's it, it's focused. So perhaps we, we gain from this and we, we hang on from this, the importance of focus on something shared. But we also focus on on that one to one and that internal conversation as well. Uh, yes, Kevin. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? I mean, it's just adding to what you had said. I think. I think one of the things sometimes we lose when, when we're back in school or college is that time to reflect. Mm. What, we, what we've had at the moment is a lot of time to reflect. And I think somehow if we get back to some sort of normal situation, I think building in that time to reflect on what students are doing, thinking and mm. sharing um, is really an important aspect of, the, you know, of getting back to normal. But, but it's yeah. something that we need to retain and not forget again. Yeah. I think that some of some of the things that concern me are, you know, the the subject is quite an, an expensive subject, and we have specialist space and we have specialist equipment, and that needs to be maintained, and and it costs a bit more money, and and you know, my concern is about you know loss of access to these specialist materials, access to uh, you know specialist teachers. They talk a bit about, you know, the the need for for accessing their specialist teachers in certain ways, and and so for me, there's, you know, some concern, maybe not so much in in FE, although I think, it, of course, it depends on on budget pressures, but but you know, further down down uh, the line in education, in in primary, in some secondaries, where are there where there are competing uh, budget pressures. We, we've had a, a question in, uh, from somebody who says, in my school, the budget deficit has gone from 2,000 to 60,000 in the last year. And the head teacher says there's no more money for art materials. What can I do to ensure that children don't miss out on the chance to have therapeutic art? And I, I, I don't necessarily have an answer to that, but I think these are very real questions. This, 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 you know, the potential for a loss of access to the specialism of the subject. I, I don't know if anybody does have a have have an answer to that or has any any insights. Yes, Jed. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, uh, just to say, um, I point people to the RSA publication called Art Rich Schools, and that they identified three areas. I think you mentioned some of them earlier, Rachel. Um, the importance of art specialists um, in, in having specialist staff as art specialists because they they understand how to engage young people in using media that help them express their ideas to the best of their ability. The second is having dedicated spaces because without the dedicated spaces you can't provide the quality of experience and the, the offer. And thirdly, the opportunity to work with partners and volunteers to really support externally opportunities. So artists in residence, visiting artists, galleries, museums, places where we can stimulate the ideas 
and we can develop different types of critique and opportunities to share work with other organizations. Um, yeah, that's that's all in arts rich schools. Thank you, Kevin. Can I just say very briefly, I mean, I know that resources are, are a big thing and, and we go through go through them in school like, you know, like I don't know what really, and they're very and they're expensive. But um, you know, there are you know there are things called scrap projects around, dotted around the country. So I don't know what area the, the question where the, the question has come from. But you know, massive, that's a possibility to research that because for a small fee each year, you can go as many times as you wish to to get resources that have been donated by local firms. And then the other source would be to actually to, to look at your uh, the parents of your children and see what see what their occupations are and tap any tap any potential there. Right, thank you, Michelle. Just to say, I mean that that's a horrifying. Um amount of, of deficit that's been described there and and let's make be under no illusions that's what's happening in schools right across the country and i think we have to unite and shout very clearly that whatever financial pressures the government is facing as a result of the cost of the pandemic and the additional costs that schools have had to shoulder in order to make their schools COVID secure, that cannot be at the cost of children's education. It cannot be that we can take away the things that they need. And I know that's quite easy to say, but we've got to say it. We've got to say it. Well, well, absolutely, Michelle, because I was going to, uh, I'm just going to jump in there and say, you know, um, th th this particular school has had a deficit from 2,000 or 60,000. And, and the head teacher has said, oh, well, you know, we haven't really got any. It, surely we've got to change people's attitudes to, to, to the creative subjects. They, are, they should be on a level playing field with all the other subjects in school. It, it, for me, as an outsider from, from education, um, you know, it, it's, it's absolutely a no brainer that, that they should be uh, put, put in this, on this importance. And, and not only that, but, but, you know, and I would say this, wouldn't I? But for me, art teachers are some of the most special, special teachers in the education system. And I'll tell you why, uh, for, for really factual reasons, art is a massive, massive broad spectrum of ideas, observations. Um, it's subjective um, and, and there are no golden rules to it. And, 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 and that art teacher is na navigating with the students all these different variables and algorithms to, 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 to do with creativity. And quite frankly, what I see from a, as an outsider is, is the reason why art has this, this major problem within the education system is because it doesn't really tick a box. It doesn't tick a box. You, you know, you do history, you do, you, you do science. Now, I, you know, I, I'm talking as a lay person here and, and maybe my argument is a bit simplistic, but, but, but you talk about those subjects, they are, they are, for a greater or lesser degree, they are factual subjects. You either get the answer right or you get it wrong. With art, you don't. And it's, it's not only just the right or wrong with art, it's expressive. And, and the powers that be can't tick the bloody box. And so therefore, the, 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 the funding uh, is, is, is a bit, is a bit more sort of uh, on the back burner. And it so clearly shouldn't be. It so clearly shouldn't be. We, we've been producing art, you know, um, since Neanderthal time, since the handprints on the cave, for God's sake, um, all the way through. And, and this is really um, incredibly important for education. There, soapbox over. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. You know, there's been a whole flurry of comments that have come in from the chat that support you. Exactly. So we've had one person says, I did a student voice at the, at the secondary school I teach at and on average 50% of students said that art supported their mental health during lockdown. Uh, somebody else says, I think that there is also an argument that the past 12 months might have given art education a new way of working. Many of my students fully embraced uh, virtual gallery visits to museums that they would not have otherwise been able to visit and have engaged with all sorts of online 
activities. So there's 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 a lot of uh, I'm a qualified teacher, but now work as a thera therapeutic art coach at school. Goodness. So there's there's a lot of support for your position, and and you know we, that's what hey, we want. I bumped we off school. I bumped off school to go to the BNA to look at pots. I mean, for God's sake, you know. That's what I did. And, and I remember telling my art teacher and he said, well done. Well, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, let us move on to the to the next section, which is um, which is the recover section. Um, and in our next video, we're going to focus on uh, uh, the way that we interpreted this word recover was very much in relation to how the, the students talk to Keith about the process of making. So what they learn through the experience of making and how it helped them cope with um, the losses that they outlined in the previous recording. Um, and I, I just wanted to pick up on a couple of things here. There's a, a really interesting report um, um, that was released in 2019. I think there's a link uh, that, that we'll make well put into the chat. There we go, as if by magic, um, which is by UCL and the BBC, which was examining how engaging in creative activities can help us cope with modern life. And the reason why they, they cite three key reasons why this is. The first is that it acts as a distraction tool so that it helps you avoid stress. The second is that it's a contemplation tool and it gives you space to reassess problems, to think through experiences and to recognize and acknowledge feelings that we have. And the third is that it's a means of self-development. So to helps us to build resilience self-esteem and confidence so on that note let's move over to our next recording to see what the students themselves have to say about this so you so you so for your project you you try to interpret sort of a, a, a sort of an aesthetic through sound is that correct yeah, I did. I used uh, classical music to sort of influence the composition on the canvas. It's incredibly evocative listening to something whilst cognitively doing something with your hands. Don't, do you find that? Do you, do you find listening to... Because sometimes I find I can't listen to a radio play when I'm doing something uh, with my hands because I'd have to concentrate too much. And so do you, you obviously find that the classical music sort of goes in, but it flows out the other side and it helps you to create, does it? Yeah, exactly. Like you just get fully lost into it. Like it's sort of like it just guides you to whatever you're doing. And there's no like guidelines to whatever you're doing. It just, it just pours out. So I took photos of people um, on, on the beach and photoshopped them into a bubble. And then I put, the, the images into an actual bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. The irony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just sort of explained how it felt to be in lockdown, how you couldn't see anyone. You were just yourself in a bubble, not being able to go anywhere, not being able to see your friends, workplaces, um, college, like you couldn't do anything. Yeah. Um, you if and if, if it was to, to pop if you were to actually leave the bubble you could have high risk of getting people sick or getting yourself sick and your family and loved ones i mean it, it, it's i mean i I've, I've noticed with 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 all your projects that there there's you know there's the there's the surface statement if you like you, you look at the the aesthetics of your projects and then you read what you've put the story behind it and you know and some of it is quite profound and some of it is quite thought-provoking uh, and it does take you from um, just that simple kind of aesthetic um, into a sort of a different area. It does take you down a tunnel. Um, I mean, Becky, what what did you do? So, ju so just just remind us what what would what would the idea was behind that? Um, well, in the first lockdown, I was with my family, so we were quite close to the beach in Bexhill. Right. And it was pretty much the only place other than like the wooded areas and stuff that we'd go and I'd be like, oh, wait a minute, it's quite nice to be out the house. And it was it was quite a breath of fresh air. But at the same time, there's always that, oh, I can't go and say hello to anyone. Or I can't, no one can come and say hello to our dog or whatever. Or like, we're usually like, oh, there's a cute dog, we'll go and say hello. You couldn't do that. And it was 
in the same way of it being like hope inducing you also used to look around and be like well we're not getting anywhere very quickly and it's sort of like the more depressing sort of side of it came on and I wanted the seascape to be like this is the positive side of things and then the newspaper clippings like the just the negative thoughts that are around everything that we're thinking about at the moment I honestly I, I have to feel for you lot because you know you're 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 of an age where you know social life is is a religion that's really what it is you're you're going through a, a, a you're not only a university of creativity but a university of life you really are and for this thing this thing to hit that, that sort of stifles that that puts sort of boundaries on that is really 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 tough so so matt what did you what what did what was your concept for the project then what did you feel like doing um I did a installation in my garden shed at the back of my um, right. garden because um, I wanted to, like, I wanted to do a project in a space that, um, because the space was like isolated in its own, and I wanted to try and use that in the project, and because um, like if you're trapped in a house with your family, you sometimes would want a place to escape to. So some people might have found their little space in their house like a shed. Just tell me, Danielle, what 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 um, what inspired you for your for your project? Well, the thing that inspired me was mostly to do with my family because you think when you're in lockdown, you're at home with your family. Yeah. But some of my family has kind of been separated since two of them have moved out. Yeah. And it's just the family unit that I wanted to focus on and where the locations of the members are. So t tell me, Anne, uh, how, tell me about your, um, your, your, your sort of concept and your pro the project. So my project was all about my bedroom and how it was my personal space. Um, my bedroom is where I'd done everything and I didn't realise how much I relied on everything in my bedroom. And so my mental health was really bad in the first lockdown. And so the changing of my bed represented my changing mental health and how some days I was really, really happy and some days I was really, really sad. Danielle, how, how about you? How do you, how do you, how do you feel about it? You, do, you, 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 you really, do you think that the human interaction is, is, is an integral part of the course? At the end of the day, you're just seeing people through a screen, not really interacting face to face to the fullest, even though like we're doing now, it is kind of face to face but not if you know what I mean by that. Yeah sure yeah and how about you Matt how are you how are you feeling about it? I much prefer not well actually um being at college and doing the course. You, I mean, you it's a lot uh, it's a lot easier like with everyone in the same room. Yeah sure sure yeah absolutely Harvey how do you feel? Everyone everyone definitely wants to go back to college me included I, it just feels so much better interacting with people and having that one-to-one -one with the teacher. Um, again, like I said earlier, it's you can't really have that at home as much as you want to cry and replicate it. Like it's not the same thing whatsoever. So. Okay, so we've heard from the students about their experiences making art during lockdown. They're incredibly um, articulate. Uh, what is interesting, there's a, there's, been a, there's a lot of activity going on in the chat and I'm getting lots of questions through and, and you know, there are, there are questions like why, you know, should the creative arts be increased in, in the curriculum? Why are teachers not being taught, you know, in the primary sector specifically, why are they not being taught about how to engage these materials with, with, and teach them to, with young people? And what can we do about the pressures of um, exams and assessments and how they get in the way how students you know want to engage with art during lockdown as it really helps them with their mental health yet they're constantly having to think about the pressures of exams and not knowing quite what's going to happen in terms of their exams especially the BTEC students that, that, <coughs> that we worked with um, and, and these are all you know huge questions that I'm not I don't know if we're, we're going to be able to answer but I think that you know thinking about the value of the subject which is kind of what a lot of the questions revolve around this idea of you know that, that making art 
is really valuable. What do you, I'm just going to open it up to the panel members, what do you think is happening during the making process that really supports these young people's well-being and, and, it, and, and fosters their creativity? What is going on in this process of making that is so, so important? Michelle. Well, coming at it from a, a position of a, it being about voice, which is one of the things, for me, it's it's when because if you've got the opportunity to uh, pursue something that you are curious about, that is your interest, that's self-determined, even if that's within parameters or a brief or constraints of material or whatever. But if there's that element of choice for you to pursue and determine the path of your learning, that's incredibly powerful and incredibly engaging. So I think I think that's one of one of the things for me that. Um, really important and we need to kind of hang on to it um, but also the the constant problem solving that's going on when you're when you're embarked on that it's it's a safe space in which to do it because as Keith said there are no right answers um, and you're making those fine judgments yourself you are basically you know knowing what to do when you don't know what to do <laughs> now, those are powerful things and I think I think those build resilience they build confidence and they build a sense that you're doing something with purpose and meaning that's got to be good that that really echoes uh, a point that somebody made in the chat which is uh, they say we live in a world where we don't need to retain knowledge it's in my pocket on a phone it's via google the future belongs to those people who can use their head and their hands together which yeah, I think yeah. Is lovely. yeah isn't that great uh yeah. jed Jed. um yeah I, um in the first handout people will see that i've put in a a, a page of thinking about what's actually happening um, in, in, in artists and young people as they make art uh, in terms of developing their mental health and well-being. And as I was putting that together, I was reflecting on the fact that um, overall, and anything you do that's creative, anything you do in all areas of art and design is an incredibly positive thing. You're using your mind and you're using your hands, whether it's hand-eye, mind coordination, to make things, whether you are drawing on subject matter from across, you know, the universe. Really, you can you can focus on anything, or whether you are thinking about abstraction, or whether you're thinking about um, referencing other artists or other creatives, other designers. Um, the making process, the thinking process, the crafting, the handling, the tactile, the physical, the interaction with your mind. These are all incredibly positive things. Now, I notice that um, that these kinds of physical activities are said to be similar to meditation. They uh, boost our what's called our CD4 plus lymphocyte count. It, this boosts our immune system. Um, it promotes better cognitive function. Um, I mean, you can go on and on and list, you know, the effect of a sort of a little bit of a dopamine that's generated into our system while we're being creative. I mean, you can't find anything negative to say. Um, why wouldn't you be positive and excited if you're an artist or you're engaged in art making? I just can't imagine being in a better place at any other time of day or night. No, absolutely. I, I entirely <laughs> agree with you. Sorry, Kevin. Okay. I, I just want to pick up, I mean, obviously I agree, agree with what Jed's saying, but I just want to pick up on what I've said about primary, because I work in primary school at the moment, and, you know, I mean, I've worked on Zoom, doing Zoom lessons with children using scraps of cardboard and scrappy old bits of paper, cornflake packets, biscuit oh packets, God. to make collages, and it's been wonderful, and, um, and whatever they've had, they've used and they've engaged with it, so that's really good. We've also set up at Manorfield a project called Window of Wonder, where we've we set it for the whole school as part of the Philosophy for Children course. So Philosophy for Children is an approach where, uh, which gives children opportunities to actually ask questions, but also um, listen to other, other students' comments. So they, they can't, they, and if, they, if they want to speak, they have to put their hand out and they have to wait until somebody else is finished. So we have Philosophy for Children lessons every week. Every class has, does it once a week. We set up a Window of Wonder project where children of 
we've asked them to draw from one of the windows in their house and we're using that as a kind of an interface where they bring it back into school then we can start a discussion about what was happening to them during the lockdown what they were looking you know what they were looking at what they were seeing what was going on um and i think you're going to get that pack of information as part of the overall pack for yeah. this project yeah yes definitely that's going to be made available to everybody kevin this links into a question that's come in in the chat which is about pencil case poverty how do we deal with the situation where we you, you know where we may work with families who have very limited income how can we support uh, those children to still engage with art practice yeah, well i've experienced it as well you know with some children who are well resourced others are not and um, you know we we look to support those uh, those impoverished children where we can from a school end um, and um, you know we 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 ask um, parents to come forward if if they you know if they really can't afford to do these things that we ask them to come forward and actually to to speak to somebody and then we look at how we can help them and it might be through the classroom teacher who 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 generally sees their parents every day. Um, or it could come via, you know, the head or the deputy head or so and so. So there, there are different ways in which we try and address those things. Right, thank you. Okay, folks, let's move on to our final recording. So in the final recording, we explore uh, refresh. And, and for us, we, we interpreted this. Again, we went back to um, Barry Carpenter's recovery curriculum, and we were really interested in what he was saying there about the importance of hope and resilience for young people as they come out of lockdown. Uh, and and, be, and we, we, as a society and, and globally, begin to address you know, how we, we we deal with the pandemic and the vaccine and so on. So we interpreted refresh as as a way of looking at you know what came out of um, these young people's experiences of making art during lockdown that are really positive, things that we can build on, things that we can take forward as as we move into our brave new world. So uh, I, I'm well if we could just play the uh, the final video. I must admit, I do struggle with with uh, with sort of technology, really. Zoom meetings, team meetings, we're all we're all doing them now, uh, and and it becoming a sort of a real kind of uh, staple of uh, and, uh, and a real normal way of communicating. How how have you how have you found it? So for me and my teachers will fully back this up. I hated computers. Right. hated them and being able to do this and have this experience has actually made me so much better with using them and being more confident using digital artwork within my own work and stuff like that so i think it's been quite good to right expand our range a little bit you've kind of felt the fear that fear and done it anyway kind of thing yeah definitely. yeah good good i mean you know it, it, it's funny i mean i i I've, I've found over the years that i've been doing you know um my creative career uh, so, so to speak, um, I found that that obviously you you come up against uh, challenges that that you know you do have to actually overcome. Uh, whether they be challenges of, as you quite rightly say, a technical side, or whether it's challenges from from a process kind of side. So you you found it you found it really uh, interesting. So how have you have you incorporated any of this newfound knowledge in, into what you're doing and what to what you're creating? Um, definitely more recently where we're doing a lot more digital editing. Usually that those words would scare me. I'm so old fashioned in the art that I create and the art that I want to do. It just, I just want to do it like by hand and with pencil and paper. And as soon as I hear those words, digital editing, my mind goes into panic mode. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I well, think it's been like really me, good for that. Yeah. Well, I do talks up and down the country and this, that, and the other. And I talk about my dyslexia uh, quite a bit. And, and quite frankly, the reason why I do that is because it, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer now that, that it's the dyslexia that actually got me into ceramics. Um, if I hadn't been dyslexic, I don't think I would have taken to it as, as, as much as I do. So yeah. what, I, what I would say to, to, to all you guys that, that you're having this very, very strange uh, experience with the pandemic 
whilst trying to do something creative, whilst being mostly on your own as individual people, when we come out of this, it will give you an insight into uh, looking at the world in a different way, a unique insight, because can, you can you can plan this on a on a on a university or college course, even if you tried, it just you just couldn't. But here we are with this 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 strange situation. So uh, so coming back to the dyslexia, it's like the way I see dyslexia, it's just a different way of looking at at the world, at really understanding it. And so if, if we get anything out of this kind of pandemic, um, it'll give us that sort of, you know, sixth sense to, to maybe observe the world in a different way to, to the one we, we might have done or taken for granted if we were still in whatever normal means, normal times. And, and, and you know, for you to go through this, this process uh, at this stage, it, it definitely is unique. It definitely is. Yeah, hi. I just want to say something on your point. It's Katie. Um, you you said about your experience with dyslexia. Now, I've grown up in a world um, for my whole life. I'm I've been blind in one eye, so my world is different to what other people is, and I'm very tactile with my work. Um, I prefer doing things three D, three D, like actually making it because. I have no depth so drawing it is very very difficult um but yeah so the way that I express through my 3D work is because of my blindness so I feel like if I wasn't blind maybe I would be better at drawing and maybe I would be better at realistic painting but it's that expressionism through your art so I completely I completely agree with that but it, it, it's it's the, it's the reason why your your particular creativity is so special because no one else can do that but <laughs> But no, it, it, it's exactly why, you know, because because I quite often ex explain with people with dyslexia, they have a, a greater affinity to form, volume, uh, shape. A, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of architects are severely dyslexic. Norman Foster is severely dyslexic. And you could quite easily argue he wouldn't be doing what he's doing unless he was dyslexic. Yeah. And so it's taking those. Well, for one of I don't even see I don't even see the fact that you're blind in one eye as a as a negative. Quite frankly, it's, it's just who you are, and it's the way you see the world, and you know it's it's unique to you, and that and that's and that's incredible. That's that's really wonderful. So I found this lockdown much much easier, and oh. it's so different to the first lockdown when I was completely cut off. I had no one. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Isn't it interesting how, I mean, you know, not that I'm a religious person, but we have all these rituals and we have all these symbol symbolic structures that we do. And, and art is, 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 is a massive, a massive um, instigator of that. But, but you're quite right in, in doing that, in maybe changing, in, in going through a ritual of maybe changing your, your bedroom round, how it can put you in a different frame of mind. Um, to, to then go on and do something else. I mean, I I often find that, um, that that there's certain rituals that I will do of a morning or or, or in in an evening to, to sort of uh, sort of centre myself to be able to go on and and think uh, of of maybe some creative project that I'm that I'm doing at, at, at any particular time. How do you feel about it, Amber? Um. I like being at college. I don't necessarily like it here. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't mind doing work here because of my family and everything, but it's a lot harder to try and understand what I'm doing while I'm at home. I would yeah. love college to have a lot of people to help me understand and explain. I mean, uh, you, without sounding too poetic or again, hippie nightmare, um, you know, when I do, when I do the show, when I do the pottery throwdown show, um, and I have someone in front of me, uh, one of the potters, and, and we have their work on the bench, and then there's us, and their work is, is, is basically the conduit between them uh, and us, and, and what they communicate in their work uh, that, that comes from them, um, and it's been well executed, obviously, uh, on a technical point of view, but, but that aside, actually, it's, it's that it's that level of communication with something that they've done that's very creative. 
and and you know uh, humans uh, we are social animals that that's from from the handprint on the caves of France back in the day to to to, to digital art to now you know it's all a form of communication and a form of expressing ourselves with with uh, our emotions um, and yeah I, I think you're 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 absolutely right I mean you know fingers crossed the pandemic will come to an end this year shortly um, and uh, and we, we we will be able to uh, interact on a far more personal level um, uh, and and hopefully you'll be able to then it'll almost be like a, a bonus for you guys to, to, to get to back to some kind of normality. I was actually just going to make a point about like, just disagree with everyone just for a second. Um, <laughs> as much as obviously it's, it's so important to be around people at the college and it does make a huge difference, obviously in our work. I think at the same time, we have all appreciated the alone time in a way. Um, maybe not during the first lockdown because I think it was too much of a shock then, but this lockdown especially, I've definitely appreciated where I've moved out from my family and I've got a room to myself all day, every day I can just put some music on and I think a lot of the time I've got a schedule, I can stick to my schedule, I've got a diary and I plot my plans and I make lists about things that I need to do and I think if we hadn't have had the lockdown this time I don't think I would have found that and I think I would have just still been in this sense of like sort of chaos and I have actually been enjoying doing work from home if that makes sense I'm not saying it's the best work I've ever done but I think learning to think for ourselves is definitely been helped by this lockdown you really do have youth on your side and um don't don't the, the, the lovely thing about about having youth and about being in a way kind of slightly naive about life in in, in general um keep just keep hold of that naivety as well as your maturing in, in your creative process it's really wonderful uh it's a really wonderful attribute in 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 anyone who's an artist or who anyone who's creative that slight sense of naive naivety to look at themselves to not take themselves too seriously uh, and but take their art and their craft incredibly seriously but 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 just always try and have that sense of being able to self-observe to look at yourself uh in, a, in an objective point of view it's a hard it's a hard thing to do but but uh if you can do that I, i'm telling you now you'll be able to do anything you will be able to do anything in life you 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 have youth on your side you can do anything you like seriously <laughs>
which I think is rather a, a lovely comment. So there's some interesting comments there about, you know, possibly there are some structures, there are some things that we can do in order to raise the, the status of the subject. Um, I've also had some questions about specific media and whether some media really enhance and support well-being more than others with a particular reference here to clay and is clay a more therapeutic medium to work with than any other and i'd really like to open that up to the to the panel for your thoughts well just just quickly and it might be a surprising answer no it isn't it isn't it isn't more important than any other um because because as we've all discussed off the airwaves before and it's not it's not just the medium it's the process it's that cognitive working with a natural material or not even a natural it can be digital it's the process and it's the process that that invokes in your head in your mind that is is the is the most powerful thing the thought the aspirational aesthetic that you've got in your head and how you create that in the real world to communicate with other people. And that could be any kind of medium whatsoever. Yeah, I think everybody's you. got their thing, you know, that's the other thing. Um, some people love clay, it's their medium. Some people love biros, you know, and the, the point is they need, all children, all pupils need access to it fabulous range so that they can find their thing and they can try lots of things and that's so important to keep that breadth and joy and, and play um, alive and we can only do that if we make the opportunities for them. Uh, Jed and then Kevin. Um, I, I would, a very quick point just to say that uh, I agree of course with what with what everyone's saying um, but it's important to note that you know our, art craft and design as it's been described this evening is art craft and design and there are craft activities there are design activities and there are art activities and we look at art and we engage with design and architects and photographers and we look at the work of craftspeople as well just as Keith <coughs> shows us on the on the great pottery throwdown um, we've got to give children and young people an opportunity to try all those out to test out the materials you, you know students can be great great painters but the day they discover clay could transform them or they could be great sculptors and the day they pick up a camera could take them in another direction so you know all of those are important you know, and, and it's essential that we we try and enrich the opportunities um let's not we, we were talking about money earlier on but cre creating richer opportunities is going to make a difference because because it it, it just transforms an art and design department or the work in a primary school into something that's multi-dimensional and, and that, that is full of color, life, physicality, tactile qualities, and, and the virtual experience as well. Don't forget video, don't forget animation, don't forget stop frame, you know, all of those things. That, you know, so what have we all been what have we all been doing in lockdown yeah. we've been watching netflix amazon you know <laughs> looking, looking at our bloody phones at, at images for god's sake you know yeah. art is all around us and sometimes because it's so encumbers in our in our in our in our lives maybe that's why we don't see it we don't yeah. see it for the importance yeah. that it really is yeah but we have seen it in the pandemic as, as shown as what the world can look like when we take it away our city centers our towns the art is not there for us and it's gray and it's dismal and that's our future if we don't invest now in our schools in art craft and design education we've had a glimpse and it isn't nice just to say that we what we do is try across the school to work to to engage the children in working with a wide range of materials you know, last summer when schools went back, you know, in the nicer weather, we were outside using twigs and joining them together and making mobiles. You know, we were doing collages with leaves and making little Andy Goldsworthy type things on the playground or in the garden. You know, back in schools, we might have, we'll have, a, a, um, everybody will do printing or everybody will do painting, you know, so we go through the different media. We make clay, unfortunately, we can't fire it. We use that clay, which is the air dry clay, air dry yeah. clay, but it's better than not having any. And, uh, you know, so they get experience of, you know, both two and 3D, and then we do designing posters, cards, whatever. So 
you know, it's important to keep that going. And I would say that what you probably need, you know, just working in the school, you need somebody in school who's an advocate working with you. So you bounce, you've got somebody to bounce ideas off. And then I'm talking about how we take this further on. I think it's times like this where we're looking to refresh is time to get to know what's happening in the next school and maybe get together, have a meeting and then join, get another school involved and pull people together as a little community because there used to be a lot of that. And when there were many art inspectors and art advisors in local authorities and arts coordinators in the schools, but all of those kind of things have just diminished. And I think it's it's how we have to take that on as individual teachers and and experts to try and make that move again. Thank you very much, Kevin. I think you're beginning to answer the you know the the big question that that a lot of people have, which is how we can we build this more into the curriculum, considering how important it is. How do we raise its status in in our educational settings? And and also, I mean, there was somebody who said that it's not just in education in educational settings, not just senior leaders or other teachers, uh, but it's also parents. And it's not perceived as valuable beyond, uh, you know, in the wider school community either. How do we change these perceptions? I mean, we, we're looking at a, a ways we, we tried to do it just before the lockdown came, where we were, we wanted to bring parents into school to work with the children on a, on a, on a local project to do with the local community because they're, they're making changes to the estate where the school is. We got involved in a project. We, we'd advertised to bring parents in, then the lockdown came, so it's suspended. But, you know, getting parents in, running workshops for them, showing them what the children are doing, and you know, and getting them involved as well. You know, getting them involved. I think that's a really important thing. It's right, not just for, not just for art, for 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 across the curriculum. Yeah, thank you, Jed. Um, yeah, I, I've had a question come in on my phone from from someone who can't get on, onto the chat, so they they've cut through sideways here. A uh, question from uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, applaud it. A question from Andrew Mutter about about children and about um, being being scared and being very hesitant in in making art as a result of lockdown and because they've they've lost the continuity of experience. What can we do to help help young people and help? younger age children particularly build the confidence uh, again in, in using the materials. Good Anyone question. else want to answer? Mm. Well, I we mean, well, well, look, you know, as, as, as far as I'm concerned, and we've all heard this, sta this statement before, you know, everyone remembers an inspirational teacher. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are, you could be 90. And still remember one at least, well, at least one teacher that inspired you to go on a certain path that that, that, that you then took. And and uh, and for me, well, I'll tell you, Mr. Mortman was my art teacher. Absolutely wonderful chap. Um, uh, and it, and it's it, it's incredible how um, you know with young people that you 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 shape you can shape the the path of their life from from you know. Um, uh, one side being a, an academic career or another side being creative you know it, it's it's it, we are built with one the right the right hand side and the left hand side of our brains for god's sake one is the academic one is the creative side it, 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 they should be in tandem with each other they should be held in, in the same importance it's it's criminal that it isn't uh, as far as i'm concerned and it's 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 not only detrimental to the children, but it's detrimental to our society that we don't we don't actually advocate that more often. Yeah. Thank you, Keith. Um, We're coming towards the end now. We've got like one minute left. So I know Jed just really quickly yeah, wants just to very, come in. Very, very, before very we quick take point. A uh, very quick point, which we haven't stressed tonight. That's to say that much of what we're doing in art and design is about risk and taking risk, but it's about taking measured risks. And um, if children are hesitant then they're getting stressed and worried. But we know that art and design is so good for their mental health and well-being. Teachers have to find ways of, take, of, of developing children's ability to take risks and try things out, but not to pile on the pressure or not to pile on the stress or, or to have expectations that are unreasonable. Let them engage, let them play. You know, I mean, Picasso, no. Picasso spent most of his life playing, didn't he? He did indeed. Absolutely. <laughs> We have somebody here who indeed has said exactly that. Help students by having a series of non-assessed play. 
And there's, um, just before we go, Kevin, somebody has, has got in touch and we'll find out who it is. He says, Kevin, I'm round the corner from Manorfield and I have a kill. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That's brilliant. I'll get in touch. Get her details. There you go. Yeah. A practical, <laughs> practical solution to a practical problem. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay folks this is it we've come to the end of our webinar which i think has been amazing uh and i i, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our panel members a massive thank you to keith for joining us today and for for working with the bexhill college students who i think everybody would agree are amazing absolutely amazing completely humbling hearing their experiences of making art during lockdown and thank you so much to julie clark as well for supporting us in this project and 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 really kind of acting as the conduit between us and 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 working with the students we couldn't thank you all enough um so on that note uh, I know that there are lots of questions that we haven't been able to answer tonight um, but we, I will have an opportunity to go through them tomorrow and we can get in touch with you um, with with further feedback uh, uh, in due course okay thank you everybody very much for coming along tonight thank you Cheers. bye